Hi guys, so in my workplace I've been asked to set up a PHP environment. I'm the DevOps guy. I protested, as you know, I'm a big Golang kind of guy, but my my employer rightly so pointed out that that PHP, everyone knows it and it's quicker. Yeah, the LAMP stack is pretty nice from a developer's point of view. From a DevOps point of view, not so great. And as you can see here, I was just blogging, just lamenting how, well, PHP, well, as far as I know, can't even run in a serverless environment, or so I thought. The, the way to get PHP going on AWS, the most simplest way, is to run an EC2 instance. And nowadays, it's pretty simple to get going. You just need like a caddy file and a web server with PHP. And in this directory, you have sort of stuff. And the great thing about this approach is that it's really, really fast. Like, so, so you wanna change something like hello world there. Oops. Uh, hello YouTube. It's just so fast, right? Even in serverless environment, it, it doesn't go that fast. But the problem with this approach is that, you know, you have to spin up EC2 instance. EC2 is kind of expensive to have running all the time. It's a bit of a pain to orchestrate on different environments. And, um, you know, it's not, what do you call this? It's not isolate, just read my blog, okay? But anyway, there's something to be said about this approach. It's simple and it works quite well. And, and, and most importantly, the iterations are very, very fast. But of course, I wanted to improve on this. And the typical way to do that is with Docker. So I even created a build spec thing. So now I created a, a Docker pipeline. In AWS, I created an Elastic Beanstalk and a code pipeline. You're probably thinking this is overkill. But like, you know, I'm trying to do things the right way. And yeah, I even wrote all this stuff, spent time making sure it's all working, uh, even going so far to make sure the IAM roles and the AWSDK things. So this is the second approach using Docker. And I think it is a step forward, but most importantly, it's a step backwards when it comes to developer usability, whatever. The minute you, you commit and push a change, it takes like 10 minutes to deploy. To build the Docker image and to deploy it takes 10 minutes. We've gone from like instant to 10 minutes, which is just nuts, absolutely nuts. So I began looking into um, serverless options um, and I've now I'm a bit wiser. There's this thing called um, Bref, don't know how to pronounce it. It's basically a tool chain to create a layer, um, a Lambda layer that, let me see if I can quickly demonstrate to you. You use this thing called AWS SAM to create your own sort of application and it uses, and you also create your own layer, or you could use someone else's layer. Uh, and then this is the way you, you host PHP <laughs> in Lambda and it kind of, it kind of does work. So let me just show you, um, here's a demo. Let me uh, show you how I can change that. Uh, hello, YouTube. And let me deploy that. So, serverless is obviously way cheaper, but it's not as fast as the simple LAMP style way of uh, iterating, but it's certainly a lot faster than Docker. So, if I refresh, I should have timed this. Takes a bit of, <laughs> it takes a bit of time. AWS SAM, hmm, who, who, it's so awful compared to Apex App, but Apex App doesn't support layers yet. So I'm having to use this AWS tool, which is horrendous and uses YAML. Um, okay, the changes come in. Um, 
So you see the, the iterations, well, it doesn't take 10 minutes, but it's a bit painful. I'll share with you the source and stuff below, but yeah. Um, another good thing about using serverless, what I, which I quite like, is the, the logs. Um, you can basically have a nice way of seeing the logs for the, for the invocation. But there is a big ba um, uh, bad side <laughs> to, uh, to, um, <laughs> to serverless. I just, when I deployed all these sort of relative links obviously don't work because the way the API gateway maps to the serverless thing is that it's only going off one route and you can't have static stuff in there too, which most P PHP developers, you know, do willy nilly. Um, and, you know, if m most PHP developers would probably create, if they wanted to create a, a route, they would, you know, make the foobar and then put an index.php in the foobar. And that, that doesn't work in the in the uh, serverless context. You, you need like one entry point, ideally. So I showed you PHP running in the service um, context, right? I showed you how the Docker way was probably just not the right, it's not just, it's just not sane. I don't really like Docker because it's slow. <laughs> um, I'm looking for simplicity and, and serverless does make it better. It's like progress. It's like one step forward, two steps back, you know? And I'm still not, yeah, I like, I'm not even sure how I'm going to solve these relative issues um, because sadly we're, or whatever, we're using a code generator to, to, to add views to and access control to all these tables. I don't really like code generators, I, but, but it does solve a problem of giving people access to data um, that's stored in these database. And, and then, yeah, I, I have a soft spot for the old way of doing it because it's just so much simpler, isn't it? But orchestrating this on several environments is, is a bit of a pain and I will probably still be going through for the serverless thing, even though, um, yeah, how do I solve this? Oh my gosh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I hope you like that tour of running PHP on AWS. EC2, expensive, but simple. Elastic Beanstalk with Docker. Don't even, don't bother. Please don't bother. Please don't do it. And serverless. It's possible with Lambda Layers and AWS SAM, but yeah, I linked to the code for it. The, the, the configuration is a bit of a nightmare, but that's where we're at today in 2019. Welcome to my life. Thanks for watching. Please like the video and uh, subscribe. Bye.